Okay, this is Brogue. It is um, probably one of my favorite sort of classically inspired modernish roguelikes. It kind of occupies this interesting middle ground because um, for me, at the very least, it's the most actually like Rogue. Uh, Rogue was a game that came out in the 1980s, uh, actually 1980 itself, I think, and um, went on to inspire a wide swath of similar kind of ASCII based randomly generated dungeon crawler type things with uh, permadeath so if you died you had to start over from the beginning uh, it also had um, it had like potions and scrolls that you would need to find different ways of identifying either by just straight using them and dealing with the consequences or by um, by throwing them at monsters or whatever. Uh, the thing was, is the original Rogue was actually pretty simple compared to later incarnations. Um, basically, Rogue's gener like its genre, its generic conventions, the stuff that we kind of hold up for being part of the roguelike genre, uh, they largely came out of technical limitations at the time. Uh, permadeath meant you didn't have to code in some kind of save state. Um, and, or at the very least, you didn't have to code in much of a save state. Uh, you know, creating an algorithm to build your levels for you in sort of a randomish manner and populate them meant that you didn't have to hand design every level. Um, and so it had like kind of a smaller footprint for, uh, a smaller like basically file size ultimately in terms of sharing it between computers and taking up space on pretty small well large but with a small amount of space floppy disks uh, actually the original rogue was not very random in terms of the way its levels were, were laid out you would typically have three rooms across the top three rooms across the middle and three rooms across the bottom and it would just be the algorithm's decision of whether it populated those rooms or even had those rooms there at all and would kind of somewhat chart the the dimensions of those rooms but it really didn't do anything beyond that um so anyways what i like about brogue is that it, it kind of seems to be a step back from the feature creep of games like nethack where it was under development for like 12 or 13 years and you you had an absolutely staggering number of commands in there uh which is great but it was super unfriendly to anybody who was new it was very obtuse you had to put in a lot of time or you had to go and look at a walkthrough and ultimately like it really wasn't very rewarding um so this is done by brian walker uh i don't know when it first started we're on version 1.73 as you can see down in the corner there uh and at a certain point brian walker uh patched out the experience system so brogue is pretty it, it on the one hand it's very close to actual rogue and on the other hand, it does some very different things from the formula, but does them in a way that's very interesting. So one, you don't have to kill monsters for experience points. There is no experience point system. I'm going to kill things in here because I'm really bad at being stealthy in this game. But it, it is absolutely, they are actually coding a better and a more robust stealth system as, uh, as the updates roll out. Uh, the latest one, I think, was September? September 2013? I did the... The change logs are not not dated here, unfortunately. Uh, the other thing is the enchantment scrolls play a huge part in Brogue. Um, but anyways, one thing that's really neat that I think is really neat about it is that you can basically share seeds for for uh, the whole dungeon between players. So if I were to start a new game, it would just give me a completely random dungeon, um, or I could control click on it and then it asks me for a seed number. And I've already done this earlier because the audio was really really fucked up and. Uh, and um, so anyways, I've, let's do this one again. I picked the seed in particular because I thought it was interesting. It also, uh, it lets me poke at a couple things early on in the, in the, in the dungeon because I probably won't play this for a huge amount of time. I do apologize for the, the pauses here. I'm, I'm drinking in a nice vanilla porter from Mill Street, which is, I don't know, if you've never had it, it's pretty tasty. So... In roguelikes, you're always the at symbol. Uh, 
So Brogue is kind of traditionalist in that sense, and that everything here is sort of ASCII-based. I'm not convinced that this is actual actual ASCII as much as it is graphical tiles with letters on them. Uh, so the, like the number signs are, you can see in the bottom. On the bottom, there's I can hover the mouse over things and get descriptions. Uh, and so I can hover over top of myself and says grass like fungus crunches oh, grass like fungus crunches underfoot. Um, and you kind of you have your your MacGuffin. Uh, in most roguelikes, you kind of have to go down to the bottom level of them and find some random thing and bring it up to the top. NetHack gets stupidly obtuse with that stuff, but in this case, it's you have to go and get the amulet of Yendor from the 26th floor. Uh, Yendor is Rodney spelled backwards. I, I'm not sure quite what that reference is. Maybe I'll, I'll look that up when uh, when I cover NetHack, if I cover NetHack. Um, part of the reason why I started doing this was because... I, I, A, grew up on roguelikes, but I grew up with weird roguelike. My genealogy is not, I started playing rogue when I was a kid. I started playing Castle Adventure, which was not necessarily, it was kind of a dead, it was an evolutionary dead end from rogue. It, um, it had static dungeons that were hand-built. The save function was broken, um, and you had to find your way to this castle. And there was, it was more of an adventure game, but it still was very inspired by by Rogue, um, so you got like you know the pluses for for doors. But I, I was I've been watching a lot of people do uh, Spelunky streams, which I thought were were kind of a cool idea, and so I wanted to stream some of the more interesting stuff. So th this is kind of a starting point for me, but I'm probably gonna I'll probably wind up doing uh, Dungeon of the Endless. Which is not quite done yet, but it's a it's an early access thing on Steam, and I've been playing a bit of that, and it's kind of like a tower defense roguelike thing that's I think is is really fascinating. It does some cool stuff. So, as with most roguelikes, it's kind of a numbers game. Everything is turn based, so if I don't move, the jackal doesn't move. I can kind of hover over it. I can think about what I want to do. I don't have a lot of stuff that I can do right now aside from just hit it. I could run away if I wanted to be stealthy, um, but. Whatever it, it you know it has a forty four percent chance to hit me typically typically hits for eleven percent of my current health yada 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 I have a hundred percent chance to hit it it moves quickly and that basically means that the jackal moves two squares for every one that I move two tiles I guess um, so yeah I'm really impressed with the uh, God there's another one um, kind of the graphical engine that Brian put together for this like it's not it's not a looker by any means but it's got uh it's got some charm and i think the way that he handles gas whatever he has to, to program that um and I'll, I'll show you in a second so uh yeah i'll show you that in a second but basically i just picked up an aquamarine potion i don't know what that does it changes every single time um but i know because i know how the seed works so i actually know what it's going to do but i could drink it but it could be a thing of fire and kill me, or it could be some poison, or it could be an explosive gas. Um, at this, typically at this stage, it's not likely that I'm going to die from a potion. Like they're not going to give you some real crazy shit. But one thing you can do to test potions is throw them at monsters. So you hit T, it asks you what you want to throw. I could probably just go and pick, like click it, or I could just press the the letter. Um, and then I've got a, a little cursor. Um, which is, I mean, there, or there are probably ways that I could just move that cursor with the, with the cursor keys at the top of the screen, but I'm just going to click on this rat who is sleeping. And so now, now that I've used it, it kind of says it's been a, must've been a potion of confusion. The rat looks very confused. Uh, and then you see this kind of out, like basically at the bottom, uh, a cloud of confusion gas. So I can get caught in that and get confused myself but I'm going to be able to outrun that uh, on my Twitter account I would like the, the top page or the top image was uh, a point where I it was the first time I ever drank see I, I dispatched the rat catching it unaware because it was confused and wasn't able to defend itself I, I do feel kind of bad about that but the top image in my on my Twitter profile um, was the first time that I opened a potion and it was a potion of fire and it just set everything on fire 
Uh, but the the actual engine in, that uh, is in place, it, it fire looks very pretty. Or at least I feel like it does. Other people will probably disagree, but whatever. Fuck them. Uh, yeah, real scholarly over here. Um, so part of the reason why I wanted to start talking about this stuff was because uh, I'm on a... I'm potentially, or will likely be, on a panel of other people at the uh, Canadian Game Studies Association conference in May. So I kind of want to get used to talking about this stuff in a way that's kind of somewhat coherent. Um, I don't know if it's completely coherent or not, but yeah. Hopefully I'll, get, I'll be able to get other people to come in and sit down with me, but uh, right now it's just me going solo and, and drinking, so... I'd like to get more people in here because it's really hard to like concentrate on this game and then also talk about it. So I, I may make a real bad decision. I picked up this tan potion a while back. I'm gonna um, I'm going to apply it. So in NetHack, and I'm gonna keep going back to NetHack because when I say roguelike and people who are classical roguelike nut bars, they'll immediately think of something like that or uh, eight. ADOM, Ancient Domains of Mystery. I think that's that's it. Um, and those games are profoundly obtuse. They have so many different weird, obscure commands. There's a command in that hack just to wipe your face. Um, you know, it just getting anything done in those games requires a lot of key presses, and it requires a lot of knowledge of just basically what you can do in that game, because you can really do some terrible things like. If you don't know any better, fucking with a fountain on like the first or second floor in that hack could lead to your very sudden untimely demise, which happens all the time. Um, so what I like about Brogue is that rather than have you know a separate action for reading a scroll and a separate action for drinking a potion, it's just apply. So I can pre press A, and it's like, hey, what do you want to do with something in your inventory? So I can apply some food, and I will just eat it. I can apply the scroll, and I can apply this tan potion, but I don't have to worry about trying to read it or quaff it. Like, it's just one keystroke, pulls up the menu, what do you want to do, let's go. Uh, which is a refreshing taste of... Like, there's an actual sense of design here that is actually lacking from a lot of roguelikes um, that are so stodgily trying to replicate what happened before, especially when what happened before was largely the result of, like, actual technical limitations on the part of the programmers rather than any any kind of actual intent. Um, not to say that people don't do wonderful things with those constraints, but, you know, uh, just wanted to, yeah, I don't know, I, I think Brogue is a, is a neat game, as, as is quite clear. So I'm gonna just drink this potion. Alright, sweet. So, that's a potion of strength. Let's bust down this door. So, yeah, I'm on the left here. You can kind of see, here's all the things that are in your, in my, state, like, in my line of view. A cursor comes out from, like, showing which one that they're, that I'm talking about. So there's three co uh, kobolds hanging out here guarding these monkeys. Uh, and you can see that the monkeys are captive. Monkeys are real assholes when they're not your friends. Um outright monkeys are terrible fucking shits that will steal your stuff and the uh they're like fleeing algorithm is really annoying because they they basically perfectly evade you almost every time unless you can luck out into getting them into a corner or you can try to start throwing stuff at them if you have any throwable weapons that's a, a good way to to go um but i'm gonna back off from this door and let the kobolds come through or not. Come on, guys. There we go. So, like I said, there there is um, there's no experience points. So, tech like my skills go up because or my my stats go up largely by progressing through the dungeon. Hypothetically, I could do a completely stealthy approach here, but that would require way more concentration than I currently have, and probably way more patience than you probably have, assuming you have any patience at all right now. So I just freed this one monkey. They are my buddy. This is the reason why I saved the seed was because I've never seen two monkeys trapped so close together, um, and they can be really valuable allies. I saw an orc that was being held 
uh, captive at one point. And uh, that was kind of cool, but I was not able to get them. Um, so this is a, a recent-ish thing, or it's never a thing that I encountered before, you know, a couple weeks ago. But the blood wart stalk uh, is a thing that kind of grows in some of the dungeons. And basically, if you pop that thing, it kicks out a bunch of healing gas. Which, again, you, you can kind of see it diffusing through the room, and, and you can see the, the monkey's uh, health is going back up. And then we get a jackal coming in. So yeah, my boys are just taking care of the, the jackal. Um, and they'll just follow me around. And they're kind of like, this is sort of like Brogue's response to in NetHack where you start with a pet and they follow you around. Um, these guys will just take care of business. Uh, they will die as well, like if they get into a scuffle with something that really they can't handle. Um, and that's kind of heart-wrenching. Uh, again, like, it's kind of, for a game that's so heavy on numbers, like, there's actually some really kind of pretty writing, which I appreciate as an English major. Um, all right, let's 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 deal with some of these scrolls. All right, so yeah, this was the Scroll of Enchantment. So Scrolls of Enchantment are, are usually really important in terms of keeping your gear up. So yeah, your dagger shines in the darkness. Um, let's see what this one does. It's a scroll of Identify. I will use the scroll of Identify on the other scroll. All right, so... Yeah, that was kind of not necessarily the way you want to go about that stuff, but I'm also not great at this game. So, so yep, they've just followed me between levels. We're now on the second level. Um, and now we're kind of encroaching on stuff that I'm not necessarily clear on. Like, I've not played through this section before, so we might run into something that's neat or it might be completely dull. So there's a, there's a war pike over here. Um, my strength is not adequate enough for it. But it will reveal its secrets to me if I defeat 20 enemies with it. Um, but it will make me 60% less accurate. Um, but it will increase my damage by 30%. Or 37%. Alright, I guess I'll pick that up. Um, Alright, let's, let's give this a shot. I've never actually gone outside of ah, whatever weapons I kind of started with. I'm just trampling down this foliage because it increases my line of sight so again right here is a chasm uh, in the previous view previous video um my where i basically tried the potion of confusion because i forgot where it was or what it was and i was standing right next to the chasm so i had to kind of sit there and wait because if you fall down those things you can take a fair bit of damage and you can get yourself into some trouble which i'm down with getting into trouble i just not maybe not that early so i got this another scroll I love that it's complete gibberish until you use it and you kind of get it, it, it like next time you pick up one of the scrolls of enchant weapon or whatever it'll tell me what it is it, right um, all right let's just use this scroll so there you go you get you get kind of a a sense of some of the some of the art direction here where like it's basically like flickering crystals uh, that's essentially a, a scroll of shattering that blasted out and took down walls and stuff. Um, or didn't necessarily take them down, but made them brittle. Uh, it's a, I don't know, I thought it was a really cool effect. Again, this is, this is a genre that's not well known for its effects. Excuse me. I'm gonna leave that javelin there. I have a potion of confusion. Great. So yeah, that's, you know, prime example of a, a potion that I've used, and then... Oh, there's... Okay. Did you guys take out the monkey? Yeah! My monkey defeated the monkey. Go monkey. I don't want those monkeys stealing my stuff. Uh, I need to find a monster so I can start throwing potions at them. So there's gold. I don't recall if I've ever seen a... Oh, there we go. So yeah, th this stuff, I guess, shattered somehow. Oh, there we go. This could go bad, but I'm going to throw this mauve potion at the... There we go! 
So yeah, the kobold burns to death. You see billowing flames. You remember seeing billowing? So yeah, the interesting part is like when there's no line of sight, this will kind of gray out a bit. And so it just tells me what I remember seeing, which I, you know, that's kind of a neat. Um, see these spurring embers of the... I'm just going to wait this fire out because I don't know what else to do. There we go. Uh, yeah, everyone's in pretty good health. Now, I wonder... Alright, let's throw this puce potion. Alright, so the puce liquid, I can... It's probably safe enough that I can just drink it later on. I'm really glad I didn't drink that, that fire potion. Alright, so... Mauve and Puce are totally safe things. My monkeys took some damage, so let's go and chill out in this blood wart cloud. Um, so there's an explore option where I just basically... Oh. Oh, there's a, a pit bloat. So there's a... Yeah, there's a type of monster called a bloat. Again, we're on the second level, so we're going to run into worse monsters. Um... So the pit bloat is basically uh, like a monster that, yeah, see, monkey just basically hit that bloat and now the ground is opened up underneath them and my other monkey is like, where did your monkey go? Um, I'm going to get back to the, hopefully that monkey's okay. So yeah, now we're in a bog. Like, what's interesting is there's an actual sense of like, oh, there we go. All right, my monkeys are good. Rolling with my homies. Scale mail. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna want to keep that, but uh, yeah, I guess another thing is it's got a stealth range there, which is kind of neat. Um, I guess monsters within six squares of me will will detect me. Lavender potion. Uh, that's not my monkey, so I'm gonna throw something at that monkey. I'm gonna throw a potion of confusion at that monkey, cause fuck that monkey. Now hopefully my own monkeys have the good sense to stay out of the confusing cloud I do apologize for the kitty cat in the background that's Mina and she's very disappointed that I'm I've de developed a telepathic bond with my monkey I've <laughs> never had that happen I'm gonna throw a dart at this guy yeah that's right take that monkey so I guess that probably means that where my monkeys are, yeah. So I sense a patch of shadows. That's really cool. I've never, I've never actually seen that. Um. Huh. Damn it. Oh my, there's a broad sword. But... So yeah, at this point I'm probably doing really well i guess one thing about water that's kind of neat but also really frustrating is um if you go into the deeper water uh you can swim through it which is fine like you can totally do that and that's no big deal but parts of your inventory will just float away and then you have to basically spend a stupid amount of time kind of chasing that stuff down or you can just like drop all the things that you're not wielding and hope for the best. Uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna use the scroll of identify. Use it on the war pike. Okay. Well, at the very least, it's not like a minus one war pike or something like that. Should find more enemies to kill. Uh, let's see. There we go, there's Sweet Goblin. 
problem with having this many uh, allies is they're getting the kills for me. Which means if I need to get kills to have a thing reveal its secrets to me. Oh! Okay. So, another thing that's kind of neat about uh, Brogue is they've got sort of set puzzles in various uh, dungeon levels. One of which is um, sort of on a level there will be a door you can't open. You have to get a door key. And there's usually only ever one. And the door key can be anywhere. I, I've seen, you know, on a level where there's a potion of levitation um, something like sort of a chasm between you and the key but when you get the key it opens up a, a platform back to the the other area um, I've seen it on a pedestal and then have the ground drop out from underneath the pedestal if you don't immediately move away from it after you pick up the key or like at least make a beeline away from it obviously that won't change and like everything is still turn based so you still have to move squares for things to happen excuse me um, what else? Anyways, so when you open up those, the room, inevitably, there is a bunch of really, really great loot, but you can only pick one, and then cages descend around the other one, so you really have to kind of pick and choose, but it's really worth, um, it's really worth getting that key. Um, so what can I, fucking jack all right. I'm going to throw another potion of confusion at the monkey. Uh oh. Okay. So I have some confused allies. That may not be good. Ah, uh, that monkey's my ally. Oops. Okay, that one was telepathically bonded with me. That one is the door key. Alright, let's start throwing darts. Oh, that's why. My dart hit the monkey. I know I have 12 darts. My monkey tweaks the monkey. Someone get him. Yeah. Go monkeys. Okay, I got a candle lit altar. Oh, that's how that monkey got the key. Okay, cool. So yeah, it was originally on a candlelit altar, but then the monkey picked up the, the key, and that's why it has it. I realize I'm talking like a freaking lunatic, but whatever. It's a good time. It's neat. Highly recommend it. I feel like my other monkey fell down a chasm. But that's fine. Here's the, here's the door. Wand of Empowerment... Ring of Awareness. Um, haste Charm. And a Door Key. So I can hypothetically get another door. And there's the Locked Iron Door. There's nothing really doing in here that I'm, I'm super stoked about. So I'm going to get the Door Key. Yes, very good. It looks like my confused monkey wandered away. Ah, that fucking monkey. Um. Oh, okay, there's a question. Uh, miniature catfish. Um. If I confuse my monkeys... Sorry for the, probably the delayed response, but if you confuse the monkeys, um... They can wander off, they can attack you, they can attack other monkeys. Um, it, it 
you can potentially lose an ally, and that's kind of a problem. Um, they may get real confused and wander off. Um, yeah, it, it kind of it can be a bit of a problem. Like they basically stop behaving as as though they were your allies. Um, but that fucking monkey stole my dorky. Can't I throw something? What's going on here? There we go. Come on, monkeys! Alright, there we go. Alright, let's try this door now. Oh. That's new. Well, it's not new, but it's... So... Yeah, jellies have a chance to reproduce as you hit them. This may be... Uh oh. Okay. And I think I lost my monkey to the jellies. Oh god. What do I have? Alright, let's throw a violet potion. Okay. Let's throw a lavender potion. None of those potions were offensive potions. This is not going to go well. Alright. At least I can do this. And keep from getting surrounded. Oh! Shit. So this is the downside to using mouse based controls. Oh, interesting. I did not know that the Wand of Empowerment existed, but it would have been a really useful thing to use on either of my monkeys, but I'm pretty sure they're both dead. And I'm less than 40% health. I don't have a lot to... Alright, let's last ditch effort, see what the scroll does. That did not... Oh, it's a uh, scroll of map or something like that. It did basically showed the the dungeon that I'm on, and I'm pretty much doomed here. Which is a good time to call it. So you got a, a cute little animation. Killed by a pink jelly on depth 3 with 113 gold. Wow. That's kind of the consistent depth that I get to before I die. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, miniature catfish. Um... Confusing my own monkey was an unfortunate side effect. Uh, generally, I do confuse monkeys whenever I, I see them because, if I were, if I have the option, because they tend to, if they steal your stuff, their their fleeing algorithm is is such that it's it's really hard to catch them. So finding a way to, either I either have to resort to throwing darts at them, or I have to. I, there have been times where I've thrown my only weapon at them and they've still continued to get away. I've also died of starvation chasing one down because it stole my last bit of food. Uh, it, it can get unfortunate. So it, it's really weird to be that obsessed about monkeys early on, but they can do some real damage and they can, they can really get away with a lot of really useful items and, and kind of hamper your progress. Um, the two monkeys that I had following me around that were allied with me, I found on the first level they were both held captive. So, like, having them around is really, really good in a fight, but even then it didn't necessarily help with the jelly, especially because that monkey was probably attacking the jelly around it uh, towards the end, which meant that the jellies were, they have a chance of splitting into extra versions of themselves, and it can, it can get out of hand very, very quickly. Uh, I know in NetHack there's a strategy of, of filling an entire level with, with jelly or with, with slime or something like that. Which is kind of a, a well-known strategy, I guess. Or it's not really well-known, but it's a thing that people do. I don't know. Um, I've, I've not encountered jellies that, that shallow in the dungeon, which is interesting. But I don't really need to save that recording. Oh, yeah, right. I clicked away. So anyways, uh, that's Brogue. Uh, I'm probably going to call it for the, for now. Um, but I am going to put 
the the seed up here if anybody's interested it's three eight one two one two five six i'll put that in the in the video description or something later on uh and i'll probably wind up exporting this to youtube on some level um thanks for tuning in people i, I did not realize i was going to get anybody listening or watching this so